Good morning. Is it still morning? Yes, it's morning. Good morning. Namaste and welcome to the Queen's Curry Kitchen. That's my kitchen in Queens where I make curry because I live in Queens, right? Hello, hello, hello. Warm welcome to each and every one of you. It's Friday, which means that we are now unwinding for the weekend that's coming up, getting ready to enjoy some sun, sunny days ahead. I hope the weather gets warmer. I really, really hope that. Um, and in Keeping with the spirit of the sun, I thought to make something really sunny and share that with you. I wasn't planning on going live, but once I made it, I figured, well, why should my friends on Facebook miss out on this fun thing, right? So the thing that I made is called Kaman Dhokla, and literally it's from a box. I This is a food and or snack that is very... Uh, commonly made in Gujarati homes and Gujarat is a state which is located on the western side of India. I did not grow up over there. I have, uh, I've never visited that state but I'm absolutely fascinated by the cuisine of Gujarat because majority of the people are vegetarian and what fascinates me about their cuisine is that the way they have been able to elevate basic chickpea flour and make so many like hundreds and thousands of recipes and dishes with one humble ingredient of chickpea flour it totally fascinates me and i feel like it's their answer to meeting their protein needs meeting their dietary needs meeting their calorie intake and also the weather there which is kind of <clears throat> It's right off the uh, run of Kutch and uh, off of the Arabian Sea. So the weather is, you know, it's dry, but it's also damp, but it's also sweaty. And all of their food has a combination of sweet and salty to balance the electrolytes, you know. So it's almost like your food reflects wherever you come from, right? So I have a huge fascination with Gujarati cuisine because it um, deploys techniques like steaming, like baking, um, not too much. Well, there is a lot of fried stuff as well, but everything that chickpea flour goes into tastes completely different. And I, that's what I'm fascinated about, right? So I have zero skills in making this from scratch. So a shout out to all my Gujarati friends or people who can make this from scratch. You know, I bow down to you. Namaste. Um, you're the boss. So I actually rely on this packet. This is a packet that you can get in the Indian grocery stores and it's called Kaman Dhokla. I don't know, it probably is backwards on Facebook, but it's K-H-A-M-A-N and Dhokla, D-H-O-K-L-A. And Gitz is the brand that I bought. So I'm going to walk you through what I did so far and I'm going to bring you to the last step, which is the tempering of the Dhokla, which is actually the finishing touch and what it is that actually makes it really, really moist and spongy, Okay. So I actually bought this silicone cake pan from this store called Daiso, which just opened up near my house, right? So I bought this and I basically mixed everything according to package instructions. I put it in here. I don't have a Dhokla maker. So usually there is a steel plate which has a lip and you basically put that up on a steamer i don't have that and i thought you know let me wing it this with with this cake pan so i did that this is a mini sponge cake pan and guys this is how it came out this came out absolutely clean of course i washed it so there were some bits and pieces on the side i did not have to grease this because it's silicone and it was completely flexible but all i did was i loosened up the sides with the edge of a knife and then i plopped this box on top and then i flipped it and this is what it looks like right if you want, I can actually, it's still a little warm. So you see, this is, this is the texture of it. It's really spongy. And this is something that you have to do while it's still warm, right? So don't let your dokla cool off. It has to be pretty warm when you do this technique. And this technique in, um, in Hindi is called Pani Pilana, which means feeding water to somebody <laughs> so in this case that somebody happens to be our kamandokla that's what we're going to do so i'm going to quickly bring you in here right above my stove top so that you can see all the ingredients i'm not seeing people that are signing on but i'm unable to see the names at this time but you know thank you for everybody that's tuning in happy friday to all of you let's try to do this together like everything else that we're all partners in crime with okay 
So the things that we're going to need, I am going to get started with just a little bit of oil, not too much. You don't want it to be a greasy tempering, right? So while this heats up, let me bring you in with all the other ingredients that are going to go in. We are going to need some mustard seeds. If you're watching uh, from India or Gujarat, or if you eat this snack, then definitely leave me a comment. I would love to uh, acknowledge that because this is something I really admire if you can make this from scratch. I'm just not that person, right? Okay, and then I'm going to use fresh curry leaves. I also have fresh cilantro. Isn't this cute, this little thing? I bought this from Daiso as well. This is not a sponsored post, but I just love their stuff. And so I have fresh cilantro. I also have a little bit of water, half a lemon. And to this water, I am going to add sugar. So I'm gonna add one and a half. I'm not a fan of sugar in a lot of my cooked foods, but in order to stay authentic, it has to be sweet water that is also tart from the lemon juice. So you see how this is a genius way of getting all your electrolytes back into your body, right? Can you think about it? Have you ever seen like, you know, people who live in dry areas, their food already has a lot of heat and then it has a lot of sweet and then it has a lot of salty together to balance their electrolytes. People who live in mountainous areas, their food is always really rich with, uh, with butter and ghee and uh, milk and all that stuff and nuts. So I think uh, human beings are very smart that way. They've, they've learned how to live with all of the climatic things and they've been able to adapt and create a food vibe around first things that are locally available and second whatever the climate dictates to them for their optimal well-being right which is why when you travel you should always try to eat whatever the locals are eating because apparently they know a thing or two about it which we don't know about right okay so this is nice and hot. The first thing that's gonna go in are the mustard seeds, okay? And you wanna put quite a few because it's gonna be a nice topping. And apparently after this thing, it's also going to get cut. So some dokla pans are also square, which means you actually get perfect squares of it. This one was the only round one that I had. Um, I do have baking dishes that are square, but that's about it. So I'm gonna turn up the heat. And I'm gonna wait for this thing to crackle and pop. I do have some lemon seeds in there which I really have to remove. So I'm gonna go get a strainer. Now whenever you cook with mustard seeds, I've always uh, reiterated this fact that give them the time to splutter and crackle. Otherwise, they will leave a bitter bite. And you certainly do not, repeat, not want that. I'm also going to add some sesame seeds in the very end, okay? But not yet. Okay, so after a point, they're going to stop dancing. That's when you know you can add your curry leaves. Now, people also add green chilies to it. I don't eat green chilies. I don't eat any heat in my food. So I will absolutely be avoiding that. But if you eat green chilies, then this would be a good time to put it in. What I am going to do is I'll add a dry red chili. And this is something I made at home from long hot peppers. I'm going to add this instead of the green chili because I really just don't like the bite of the green chili. And now I'm going to add in some sesame seeds so that they're going to get light and toasted. If you're allergic to sesame, you can absolutely skip this step. This is optional. Okay. So that's about it. You're going to lower the heat right now and then go back with your sugar, water, lemon mix that you created. Some cilantro. And add this water into your mustard seed blend okay I just had to strain it because there were a lot of pips from the lemons now we're gonna give it a stir and we'll boil it just for a little bit just so that it'll come to a simmer we're not trying to put any raw water on our dokla remember this has to be absolutely 
warm when you spoon over the sweet and sour mixture on for best absorption. Just like any other sponge cake, when you hit it with sugar syrup and whatnot, it needs to be a certain temperature, right? Now you can uh, dip your finger and do a test and see if it's sweet enough, if it's salty enough, or I feel like it's not sweet enough. So I'm gonna put in another half a teaspoon. And it also needs to be more tart. So I will need to go back in here and put more lemon. Keep the flame to medium high so that it'll continue to boil. We're not trying to caramelize anything. We're just trying to bring it to a simmer so that the sugar and the lemon will be well incorporated. What I also like to do is, and that's a really cool hack. I'm gonna show you that right now. Look what I have. I'm gonna add lemon essential oil. And as soon as I do that, I'm gonna turn off the flame. Okay, because after you add the essential oil, you don't want to boil it too much. Now that this is done. Oh, it smells so good. It's like a zesty lemon flavor with, mm, with the sesame seeds. So good. You're just going to spoon it on top of your steamed common, like so. And all of this really will get soaked up. by the warm common that you created. So make sure when you're spooning it, don't forget to lift from the bottom so that you'll get all the goodness of the mustard seeds, etc., that you tempered. I feel like I don't wanna put any more of this water, but I definitely wanna get all the mustard seeds. So I'm going to strain this mixture again so that I can harvest the mustard seeds and the sesame seeds. And I may not, um, I won't be throwing out this water. I'll hold on to it. Perhaps I'll need it just before serving. And you can serve this at room temperature. You can travel with it. It really stays well wherever you go, right? So these are all the mustard seeds that I reclaimed. <laughs> yeah, we don't waste anything around here. That's about it. And you can see immediately it starts to get even more spongy. I hope it's visible for you guys. Yes. And then just one final flourish around the edges, right? So I like to have something with a little bit of space on the edges so that I can actually put some water, the sweet water in there. And then I'm going to cover this so that it can do its thing. And last but not the least, I'm going to put in generous amounts of cilantro, and before serving, I might put a little bit of grated coconut or coconut powder. I'll see whatever my heart feels like. That's what I'm going to put in. And there you have it. And then before serving, you're going to cut it into wedges or cut it into cubes or cut it into triangles, however you want it. And now we're going to just close this lid and let it sit for a little bit before we serve it right so this actually took me and um i steamed it for exactly 12 minutes in my instant pot and i did a natural pressure release if you're steaming this on a stove top then the instructions are typically around 15 to 20 minutes all right so let's see <laughs> Uh, yes, I'm going to take some comments. Raspreet Nen is watching. Hello, hello. Pearl is watching. Hi, Pearl. How are you today? Tim is watching us. Tim, I hope you're feeling well. Mwah, sending you love. Ron from Canada. The Maple Leaf is in the house. Thank you, Ron. You're such a generous spirit. I appreciate your help with the whole maple syrup situation that I wanted to experience. So you guys, Ron is the guy who has done extensive research on maple syrup and how I can get the best maple syrup from Canada. So if you 
want to know more about maple syrup, which I obviously know nothing about or I don't know enough to make any comments, Ron is the guy, right? Uh, let me also say a big hello to FDOMLS. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, let's say they're flying out of the pan. Yes, they do fly out of the pan because, you know, the hot oil makes them splutter and dance. So that's what happens. Mona is watching. Hi, Mona. If you want to eat some, let me know. Mona is my neighbor. <laughs> so she can literally hop on here and come and get a bite of this. Uh, yes, the curry leaves are going to go on. I actually like to bite and chew my curry leaves. A lot of people just like to weed them out, but I absolutely love to bite and chew on my curry leaves. Number one, they're great for gut health and they're also great for overall immunity. So I always bite and eat my curry leaves. Yeah, one more green thing in my body is not gonna hurt, right? Uh, Melanie is here. Hey, hey, Melanie, how are you? Tim says he is, he is getting better. Thank you. So, you know, whatever prayers that we have going on for Tim are absolutely working. So, all right. So, you know, this is what it looks like. So I just wanted to put it out there that you don't have to make everything from scratch every time. Keep it semi-homemade. What was that? Sh there was a show on Food Network, right? Um, semi-homemade that was like... Sandra, Sa Sandra Lee, what was her name? Yeah, Sandra Lee, right? Keep it semi-homemade. And she would always buy these things from the supermarket and then do like little tweaks to it and make it look really, really elegant and make it look really nice uh, by a little bit of an investment of time at home. And her, her stuff looked always amazing. It always was. And she would do like a tablescape at the end of the presentation. I was always fascinated by that show. But anyway, yes, you can keep it semi-homemade too. If you live near a, an Indian grocery store, definitely go check it out. It comes in many different um, <laughs> brands. Yes, Melanie says we also love eating our curry leaves. Yes, baby, the curry leaves, the moringa leaves, the beetroot tops, the radish leaves, the cauliflower stalks. Honey, eat all those things. There's a lot of nutrients and vitamins in there. So eat all those things. It's extra fiber. It's extra chlorophyll. So don't overcook it, but that's chlorophyll in your body. So eat it. Yay. So I always bite and chew on my curry leaves. That's what I do. Okay. So if you live near an Indian grocery store, definitely pick this up. If you don't have it, if you don't live near an Indian grocery store, definitely um, send me a DM. I'm happy to ship this to you because where I live, these things are sold by the dozens. So there's a lot of these that are in the Indian grocery store. I can absolutely get some for you and ship them. So the taste of this is savory with a little kick of salt and the lime adds the nice punch and the zest. And of course, the curry leaves, the sesame, the mustard seeds add the texture. So it's very different from a traditional cake, but it's the same texture. It's very spongy and the water, the sweet water like oozes out because some people just like to serve it dry. I don't like to do that. That's why I always do this water technique, right? So this is what it looks like after it's been rested. And if you use green chilies, then of course you won't be doing this. I'm not a fan of green chilies. I don't do green chilies. I don't even have it in my house. Like, yeah, sorry. Uh, I, that's probably the most un-Indian thing that I have, but I'm an Indian at heart, but I just can't do green chilies. So this is my common dokla for today. Um, I wanted to ask you guys, since I have your attention, tell me something. I'm planning of doing um, an FB Live where we're going to do an Indian food quiz, right? And it's going to be live and you guys are going to answer in the comments and we will play a game show. So let me know if you want to do something like that. Would you like to do it on a Facebook Live? Would you like to do it on a Zoom call? Like I can send Zoom invites and we can all do that in a Zoom room. It would be such a fun thing um, to connect with. So let me know if that's something that you want to do. It's going to be an Indian food related game show and I'm going to ask some really basic simple questions and it's just going to be nice and playful it's just a an interesting way of getting to know the food culture a little bit better so if you want to do something like that let me know in the comments below if you would like to do it um, on Facebook live if you'd like to do it on in a zoom room or should we just do it in our own Facebook group which is the learning how to cook vegan and vegetarian food so just let me know where it is that you would like to uh, participate in that food quiz it's going to be a lot of fun it's like zero judgment but we're just going to do it in a fun and playful way so that's something that i was thinking about and if uh, you like fun and games of course we all we all do then let me know i would love to do something like that all right so with that i'm going to wrap up today's segment it was really nice hanging out with you guys this was totally unplanned so you know um it was a little bit all over the place but 
Thank you again for coming and hanging out with me in my kitchen. It gives me immense pleasure to share my day to day with you. Uh, I'm not an expert and I don't claim to be. <laughs> okay, so Ron says it should be on the FB Live. Okay, Ron. So one of these days it's going to come up and I'm going to put up the announcement so you will get notified. And we will schedule it so that you'll know that this is the exact time when it's going to happen um, so that you don't miss, on, miss out on it and it's going to be a lot of fun. So if you have any suggestions of how we can make it fun, you know, send me a DM. You can slide into the Queen's Curry Kitchen personal messages and send me ideas that you want or things that you want to um, thrash around in the game show that would be a lot of fun it's not going to be very long it's just going to be short and sweet but it's just going to be fun and perhaps we'll do more of those if uh you guys really like it it's a fun way of learning something right okay so with that i'm going to wrap up and uh, like i said if you want to take a class with me all the information is on the website queenscurrycitycom slash classes if you would like to order any of the spice kits or the spice box or the cookbook uh, in the hard copy or the download e-download it's all there on the online shop queenscurrykitchen.com and if you live in new york and you'd like to sample some of the food that i make definitely hit me up tuesdays are the days when we give out free samples of uh, home style plant-based food made with olive oil and himalayan pink salt that's what i specialize in and it's just really my way of putting my love uh, my mom's love on a plate also for all of you wonderful people who leave reviews and comments and testimonials on my instagram page on my facebook page i don't think i have too many testimonials on the facebook page yet but if you took a class with us if you tried a product that you ordered from me or if you um, enjoyed the experience of coming and sharing something on the live or benefited from it in some way or felt uh, felt inspired to try something out definitely take two minutes and leave a review on google my business on google on facebook on instagram wherever you'd like to but for all the people who send me their feedback on emails and they tell me their two-year-old is enjoying the food or their four-year-old you know licked their plate off or their seven-year-old couldn't stop eating the noodles thank you so much those are the things that really keep me going and it really tells me that the mother's love that i put in it is not just for my own child who's of course uh, after college but it's for each and every child who deserves an entire village to raise them and i love moms i love your journey it's a journey so i'm happy that i'm able to uh, you know be a part of your family it really is a matter of great honor for me that you take the time to share your feedback and let me show you one quick thing check this out you see this this is a card that a two and a half year old made for me guys check this out two and a half year old this is so cute right and basically i had given her some stickers along with their weekly meal delivery and this sweetheart of an angel she actually take takes those very stickers and makes a sweet thank you card for me and tells me how del how delicious my food is like she had her parents write this and then she said i'm gonna put the stickers but can you write because she obviously cannot write that much so this this card actually is at my altar when i give thanks for everything in my life how sweet is this right so these are the things that make my day that keep me going thank you all for doing this thank you all for being in the facebook groups where you are singing praises of the food and saying such wonderful things i really thank you from the bottom of my heart <laughs> yes it, it really is actually because it moves me as to how much love there is out in the world look at this two years old she didn't have to do this right but here she is so thank you all for this i forgot what it was like to you know receive innocent love from little babies they can't write they can't do anything but they show love like this so if you have little kids who are enjoying my food and you have taken the time to share the feedback with me i really appreciate it i didn't mean to make anybody emotional but uh, I'm going to end this on a very happy note. All right, guys. So I have to hop off. Um, but thank you for being with me this Friday morning. I hope you have a blessed weekend. And I hope that this uh, sunny day can, you know, brighten your spirits, brighten everything. Um, <laughs> Melanie says, thank you very much. My kids are enjoying moving to a plant-based life because you encourage every week. Thank you, Melanie. I appreciate it. Um, it's a matter of great honor for me that you have given me 
a place in your home at your dinner table in your kitchen it really um melts my heart <laughs> ron says he's a little kid at heart absolutely i can tell i really can tell trust me ron all the interaction that we have on the um on the private messages i can tell that you are a kid at heart because you're a pure soul and you're really like out there to help me out but all these little angels you know all the little kids in your family that keep sending me messages and love the food and they make their parents send um, a note to me or send a text message it really makes my day if you head over to my testimonials page you'll see so many beautiful messages of gratitude but what you don't see is that how, how it's helping me it has helped me immensely in so many ways uh, not just financially I think that is the uh, that is the fringe benefit of doing something that I love but it has really brought so much unconditional love from the community from the world at large that I feel absolutely blessed to be a part of Queen's Curry Kitchen and to be able to share this platform with you because you are the guys that are making this what it is. It's really not about me anymore. That ego disappeared a long time ago, but it's really about coming and sharing the camaraderie, sharing the love and sharing our love for foods and flavors right here on this page. Like always, be blissful, be flavorful. I'm going to let you go. I know you guys are busy, so, you know, enjoy the sunny day. I hope it's sunny where you live. I hope your life is sunny. I'm sending you lots of blessings and lots of prayers for protection and safety in this time. COVID is real. Wash your hands. Please take good care of yourselves, and I will see you real soon. Bye, and take care. Namaste.